Good afternoon and welcome to Thoughts from the Word. Uh, we're going to pick up again uh, in chapter 4 of the book of Amos as we continue to look through the book of Amos and to see how we can apply this to our lives. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Amos chapter 4. We're going to look at verse 9. Verse 9. Listen as we hear from the word of the Lord. I struck you with blight and mildew, your many gardens and your vineyards, your fig trees and your olive trees, the locust devoured. Yet you did not return to me, declares the Lord. Another one of the declarations of the Lord that we have in this passage, uh, in this chapter, where God, through Amos, is declaring to Israel, because of their sinfulness, uh, what he is, uh, reasons why he is bringing about judgment upon them. While uh, this one is not consecutive with the previous ones, it is similar to what we looked at on Friday in that it is speaking about God and uh, his um, bringing upon their crops and their fruits, uh, various blights, uh, as we read here, blight and mildew, a strong east wind which dried everything out, uh, their fruits, uh, trees, their fig trees, and their olive trees were devoured. The ESV reads locust. The, uh, the word there is, is describes what's called a palmer worm, which is uh, similar to what I guess we would call a canker worm today or, or an inchworm, but it probably was referring to the larva of the locust. And the difference being the locust would eat from the outside in kind of they would eat the the leaves and the tops of the fruits whereas these worms would get down and eat to the core they they would just destroy the plant and the lord and, and god through amos was saying to them i i brought this on you these these punishments on you because of your sinfulness in such a way that there would be really no way that you could say, oh, it was just a coincidence, or, or this just happened. This destruction was such to draw you back to me, and yet you didn't, yet you did not return to me, he says at the end of verse 9. Everything that God had pointed out to them at this point was to help them to see that because of their sinfulness, and the greatest sin being that they did not come back to God, when he gave them clear indicators that he was calling them back, because of this, he was bringing about judgment. There are times in our lives where we stray away, and God will use various happenings, various things in our lives, uh, in order to draw us back. And the greater sin oftentimes is not the sin that led us away, but the failure of our return to God even to the point where many will blaspheme and, and talk against God as opposed to returning. May that never be for us. We know the scriptures tell us, for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. It's the common ailment we all struggle with. Uh, yet, we know that the gift of God is uh, through Jesus Christ, by grace, that it is life, the, the life that we receive by him and through him, by the grace of God. And we can receive that through faith. And so while we may sin and while we may fall, we can return back to him through faith and find forgiveness and cleansing that only he can bring. Well, let's look and hear from the Valley of Vision today. This one actually is entitled Sins. Hear now from this prayer uh, entitled Sins from the Valley of Vision. Merciful Lord, pardon all my sins of this day, week, year, all the sins of my life, sins of early, middle, and advanced years, of omission and commission, of morose, peevish, and angry tempers, of lip, life, and walk, of hard-heartedness, unbelief, presumption, pride, of unfaithfulness to the souls of men, of want of bold decision in the cause of Christ, of deficiency and outspoken zeal for his glory, of bringing dishonor upon thy great name, of deception and injustice, untruthfulness in my dealings with others, of impurity in thought, word, and deed, of covetousness, which is idolatry, of substance unduly hoarded, improvidentially squandered, 
not consecrated to the glory of thee, the giver. Sins in private and in the family, in study and recreation, in the busy haunts of men, in the study of thy word and in the neglect of it, in prayer irreverently offered and coldly withheld, in time misspent, in yielding to Satan's wiles, in opening my heart to his temptations, in being unwatchful when I know him nigh, in quenching the Holy Spirit, sins against light and knowledge, against conscience and the restraints of thy spirit, against the law of eternal love. Pardon all my sins, known and unknown, felt and unfelt, confessed and not confessed, remembered or forgotten. Good Lord, hear and hearing, forgive. Amen. Let's close our time together by going before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, we thank you that we can come before your throne of grace, for you have brought us cleansing and forgiveness. You've told us that if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We thank you for the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the cleansing from our sinfulness and the, and the washing anew which makes us righteous through Jesus Christ. And Lord, we come before you humbled, for we know that we have fallen short and that we need all of this grace and mercy. Oh God, I pray that you would keep us from sin. I pray that we would never fall to the sin of Israel, that of neglecting to come back to you even when we've fallen away. Oh God, I pray that you would be at work within us and within our, our church body. We pray for Eastminster today. We pray, O oh God, that you would raise up co-laborers to join us in the reaping of the harvest. We pray, Father, that you would bring us uh, together again to worship you. But, Father, we also pray for protection for each and every one of our members. <clears throat> As we are still dealing with this virus, I pray, Father, that you would protect us from uh, the sickness that, that comes with it. And, Father, that you would just strengthen us. Oh, Father, I pray that we would be used by you in our community, whether at the nursing home or in the neighborhood, whether in the, the businesses around us or in the schools, that the gospel light would go forth from us. Protect our families. Give us strength. Father, we pray that you would be with uh, Mary Foreman and that you would continue to strengthen her, that you would be with Shirley Hardy, and Faye Hayes, and that you'd continue to protect and keep them, and that you'd draw them near to you. We thank you for the healing that you brought Mary Hurdle, and pray that you'd continue to bring healing and strength to her, and that she would be able to return to her walks and to a more normal routine. And Father, we pray for the Bonnies, that you would provide for them, provide bountifully and in a way that just brings you all honor and glory. Continue to strengthen and heal them, provide and care for them. And Lord, we pray that you would be glorified in us, each one of us today. Give us an opportunity to be a gospel light to someone around us for your glory. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Be glorified, O oh Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching and listening today. And we'll see you again tomorrow with some more thoughts from the Word. Thank you.